Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. Uh, and a lot of people or a lot of seniors are well known to other seniors, uh, but some are more like anonymous or, or less known, but you might know their products. Products you are using on a regular basis without even kind of knowing the face or the voice of the guy that did this. And we are going to meet one of those guys today. Fredrik Åberg, super nice guy. Swede, who used to be in light. Uh, he's the author of the program Assembly 64. And uh, yeah, we all have to admit that is a program a lot of us are using on a very regular basis, basis to uh, get access to the stuff that was released for the C64 platform. So. I'm humbly grateful that Frederick could uh, take a bit of time and participate in this talk with me. So over to Frederick. Yes, I am here with Frederick Orbey, Scooby of, yes, uh, Scooby, who has been a member of a number of groups and we will go through them. And the main point in this segment is a massive amount of name dropping of Scooby's old group mates. Uh, so welcome, Frederick. How are you today? Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's a bit rainy, but uh, otherwise it's fine. Yeah. Summer died in Sweden. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we talked about this when we met at GubData and, uh, and all good planning is happening when you're slightly intoxicated. So this is well planned. So look forward to this because of the super nice planning for this. I trust you. <laughs> There's always a lot of structure in, in your videos. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there, there is sometimes a bit of a structure. So there is, uh, you will, you will be able to look forward to two kind of main segments. First is the name dropping and, and uh, Frederick's history. And then we will go through Assembly 64, potentially also a bit of a sneak peek on things that will eventually happen and all of that. But uh, stay tuned for that. There is so much name dropping to do before we can do that. Right, right. So Frederick, you basically joined the scene in 89, I would say. That's what CSDB said. And uh, so in the year between, or the two years of 89 and 90, you were a member of many different groups. That's, uh, that's some heavy group jumping there. Yeah, it was. I, uh, I, uh, I mean, I got my, uh, my Commodore uh, 128. I think it was 88 or 87. And uh, I went uh, the, the same route as everyone else, basically. I got a few uh, few games and then I started uh, uh, with pirate games. And uh, then I, uh, me and my friend uh, started a small group. And then I got a few uh, other friends and uh, I, um, I think uh, I think the first group I, I joined, which was quite, quite good at that time was Equinox. Uh, and I stayed there for, uh, for a while. And uh, then I uh, think I joined uh, Choice. And uh, I've also been uh, in Vision, the German Vision. We were mm -hmm. a Swedish uh, division of that too. And I think after that, I, uh, I actually joined Light. All right, so let's go through those. Future cracking service. Was yeah, that, that sort that, of your uh, first uh, one? Uh, we, we actually didn't crack any games, uh, but uh, we, we had an idea. Yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was my, my friend. It was quite funny because uh, the day before uh, today, my Henning, he, uh, he sent a link on CSDB. He yeah. found uh, an, an old, I don't know if it was a demo, a basic demo or something, but it was for my friend in uh, Future Cracking Service. There was some sort of a demo maker, so you could have a, a picture and then there was a, like a sprite thing and you can feed it with yeah, sine waves that. and all of that. And uh... yeah. And there was a discussion on CSTB if it was actually you, and you seemingly confirmed it because somebody posted saying, yeah, yeah, Frederick has confirmed this is actually him. 
Uh, yeah, could be so. Yeah, well, and I do have a bit of a question because the the phone number that was given out was, uh, 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 I would say, a, a phone number in Lund. Did you live in Lund? No, but uh, Shavling is uh, is the same uh, same number as Lund. Area code. Okay, so you lived in yeah, so you lived in Shavling, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Shavling. Yeah. And I and I have a very personal question on this. You have a piss greeting to Mister Led. You have to explain that. Did you know Andreas? Because Andreas was sort of my my best buddy, and you were pissing on him on your first release. That's that's so rude. <laughs> oh, oops. I I actually have no no memory of that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but you know him, or no, I have no idea. Sorry. <laughs> right. I have to give him uh, my apologies then. Yeah, he's, he's probably not going to watch this because he's very unactive on social media. He's one of the few guys with no uh, social media whatsoever. I don't even have a phone number for him. I just have his mail address. Right. All right. I, I have no idea. It's... Uh... So, have, um, so Andreas, yeah, if if you are watching this, it's not a deep rooted hate you are sensing here. It, it was probably a very fluky thing, and you might yet not even have seen this scroller. You have to watch like three minutes into the scroller to even oh, see it. Right, right. Cool. That was I, I was just stunned that you even knew him. So uh, because most people wouldn't even know him as Mister Led. Uh, oh. That's well, that's Greyhawk of Fairlight. Eventually, uh, sort of my my teammate, and oh. he, I was cracking, and he was swapping, and he was the guy I was blaming for spreading all my stuff. Of course, I didn't want uh, to violate any copyright by having my stuff spread. So, the vicious bastard stole my my uh, work when I was at the Lou, and then spread it, and I was totally unaware, of course. <laughs> yeah, I I uh, I need to watch that. Uh, it could be fun. I, I haven't watched. I, I I don't watch myself on video. I yeah. really uh, not uh, watch uh, productions that I've been making myself. But maybe maybe I could I could have a ch check at that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. You should. I mean, if it's the first one that you did that was. Uh sort of spread beyond uh, the very small community, then that's for sure something you should look at. Nice. And we yeah. were all kids in the beginning, so don't be too harsh on yourself. <laughs> no, I won't be. So uh, the next thing I noted here was Equinox, uh, one of those groups with very easy to spell names. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, not funny to, to uh, draw logos and stuff for, for Equinox. It was like shit. And you were a graphician doing logos and fonts. If I look back, most of the stuff you are referenced for, they are like logos and fonts. Yeah, they are. Uh, I did some programming also, but uh, I, I ended up, I mean, that time uh, you, you did what what uh, basically you, you were good in. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, that, that's how it went. Uh, I did some code also, but mostly it was uh, at that time it was uh, graphics and and so. And from Equinox, uh, if I look at the member list, Verdun is one of the guys I recognize, and he was the one that ended up in Triad, I, I believe, and uh, not a very long career, but I think he sort of made an impression. Rather good coder guy, I would say, and. Yeah, he was really good coder. Yeah. He was, I think he was uh, the main coder of Equinox. Yeah. Uh, and then he uh, joined the army and th doing his military service and then things sort of drifted away from there, I guess. Yeah. Then yeah. the next group I have a note of is Rising. Oh. Uh, you were a member, and and if I look at the member ranks of of rising, and here I of course wouldn't know if you were a member at the same time as the other guys. But uh, rising members, notable rising members, would be Cash now in Triad, uh, Ogami uh, who joined Fairlight after, and the Spy, whom most people would know from Flash Inc. together with Morpheus, I guess. So he was sort of the other guy that people would know from Flash Inc. Yeah. Are they are they people you know from there or? Yeah, I know them, but but I've never been a part of Rising. Not not that I can recall. Okay, I'll, I'll delete that. No. <laughs> so 
So, just so you know, the Rising was a group that was available at the time, but uh, Frederick wasn't a member of it, so now you know. <laughs> yeah, I could be wrong, but I, I have no memory. I, I uh, it, it could be that you just memory. gave them a logo and, and you were noted at that. And, yeah, uh, could be. So I, had a, I had a friends in Rising, so, so that probably. Cool, yeah. and, and then Vision. Uh, so, German yeah. group, you were the Swedish branch. Together with a few others, yeah. Uh, so tell uh, tell us yeah, about Vision. Uh, yeah, it was basically uh, a few guys from. Uh, I think I think uh, it was Choice before, and uh, then we decided to join Vision with a few few of my friends from uh, Camelot also. Yeah, Asnos and Spinks and uh, everything. Uh, those that Danish, Danish section from uh, Randos. Yeah. So yeah, we were. I mean, it was. I don't think it was a uh, quite long time, but uh, yeah, we um, we did some some nice productions and so. So uh, let's take choice first then, and uh, and the only guy I note as being somebody I know from there is Sky now in Bite Rapers. Uh, I I wasn't aware he had been part of of of, uh, of choice, but so no, uh, not me. Either. <laughs> okay, you didn't know him from there, I guess. So no, Vision, I uh, if if I read a number of names who have been members of Vision, Hain, I, I guess that's Hain Design, right? The Griffition, Dutch, yeah. super Dutch. talented guy. Uh, he hasn't been around yeah. for a number of years, but really cool. Uh, Crossfire, who has been in a number of groups, cracking. A lot of like uh, easy to get uh, originals. Uh, so he's cracked for it. one of those mercenaries for hires, basically. Dishi, I think I know as well. And then Gröpas, the uh, the main coder for Vice now, was also in Vision. And then you mentioned Glasnost. That's Camelot, right? Yeah, Camelot and Spinks. Uh, I think it was uh, four or five guys from from uh, from Denmark. Yeah. Jukke. You yeah, came I Jukke. Know, but uh, I uh, I don't know if he was part of that. Okay, he, again, he was he was mentioned. So if if yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm reading from CSDB. So if CSDB is wrong, then of course I'm just relaying something that's wrong. And and Mötley is also referenced here as as member of Vision. Um right. Ruff, uh Huba, Curlin German cracker has been around for a long, long time. Yeah. Yabba, is that the Swedish coder? Yabba, he's from, uh, he is scouting from Staffanstorp, basically. Good shit. Staffanstorp is good shit. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's Swedish. Uh, he's uh, he's not active uh, today, but uh, he he was uh, really, really, really great coder. Was he then also? Yeah, yeah. We will get to whoever joined Light because I have a long list of members of Light as well. Then I have something called Warrant. Was was that something you were also a member of? Or yeah, those were uh, those were uh, friends from uh, Helsing Boy, yeah. Smooth, and a uh, few Skyhawk, and and uh, yeah, a few other guys. But I, I I hanged out a lot with them. Was this before or after Vision? Because this was not very easy to tell if looking at CSTB. Yeah, I think it was before Vision. Okay, so uh, I'll, yeah. I'll. We will not re-record this, but uh, for for my own remembrance, I will I will edit the the script document to put it before Vision. Uh, Yabba was there as well, and uh, Wissi. Wissi, yes. So one of the guys that we meet on a regular basis now on parties. At Gub Data and so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, yeah. Yeah, we see as a and a good friend. We we uh, we have contact today, and we we have been uh, having contact through more or less throughout the years. Yeah, yeah, cool guy. Like him a lot. Yeah, really, really great guy. And now we're actually. Uh, looking at light so and and again csdb calls you a member still and the only active member of light uh 
but you're also a member of Genesis Project. I have two questions. Uh, which is it? One or both? And if you're a member of Genesis Project, what went wrong? But let's take the first question first. Uh, are you still a member of Light or not? Yeah, I guess we, we all are, are members of Light. But uh, as you said, uh, there's uh, not, not uh, many people active from Light. So. And uh, it is uh, an unwritten rule that you're allowed to be a member of one old group and one new uh, active group. So, so basically, you, you can also be uh, you can also choose another group if you want to, Bacchus. No, uh, no, if uh, no, <laughs> I, I could not. That that would be like technically impossible. So let's let's go through a number of the members here. Uh, first of all, I, I must say that Light is one of the really classic Swedish groups. Uh, Flamingo, who turned to be CTO for Spotify. So I, I know Andreas, who was I think he was the first CTO of uh, of Spotify, and then he was succeeded with Flamingo. Uh, I met him. He was working in one of the companies that did. Uh, a to P SMS before even the term SMS A to P was coined. So uh, I, I've met him professionally uh, yeah. there, and uh, yeah, really, really cool coder. Yabba, cool coder. Goblin. So you brought Goblin from. Was he in Vision as well, or no? No. I no, no. Sorry, uh, this is uh, Matthias Joknik. Uh, agile and. Uh light and uh, maybe uh, i don't know maybe some other group but but he uh, i met him later i met him first in light and and i'm not really sure but there is a german goblin as well but this is the swedish yeah, goblin right is. yes this is the swedish goblin matthias of joknik yes right and uh, the bmw nerd union is here as well jürgen so I guess he was um, cracking for light, right? He was a cracker, yeah. We uh, we had a good cracking section, also. Ended up quite high in the in the ranks. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I I should mention uh, I, because now there is sort of the bunch of people that left for censor. That would be Euskera, Psycho, Contring, Bob, Dragon, and Shark. Yeah. Yeah. Big bunch of people that form like the spine of Sensor. I don't know if they went to try it first and then to Sensor, but uh, yeah, but a number of, of rather prominent seniors. A few of them went, uh, I think they went try it first. Yeah. Yeah. And then they wanted to have new triad, and eventually it became a sensor. That new triad was was uh, more sensor. Uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, I've also been responsible for nicking a few of the light members. I nicked HCL and Vodka, where Vodka is still a member of Fairlight, and, and HCL is uh, part of Boost Design, I guess. Yeah. Spirou was cracking for light. He was also, uh, and he was a demo organizer if, uh, during. He was the the one of the organizers of TCC in 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 Gothenburg, right? And yeah. the other was Bapalando, a musician. Uh, so we nicked all all of those four. Spirou still remained for a number of years, and Bapalando basically was on the verge to quit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th this uh, this Papalando lived in in uh, what was that Boreos or where was that uh, party with the hockey hall the really freezing party? That was uh, was that Alingseos? Alingseos, it was. Uh, it was surely Alingseos. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And yeah, uh, Papalando was there. I uh, I remember. I, I scanned a few photos and I remember he was he was on on one of them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he it's he's not been around for a number of years, or um, I I don't know him personally anymore, but uh, he's not been a senior for a number of years at least. Spirou is a deputy professor uh, doing defense systems in, uh, so he's oh, IT nice. professor. So and and this Genesis project, the unfortunate you joining Genesis project, what went wrong here? And uh, this is a, a standing thing that I I should have a bit of a nagging on Genesis project. Uh, thanks, Hedning. It's all for you. 
Actually, uh, I mean, I, I turned up. Uh, I I I started. Um, I I I actually started. Uh, I I recollected my my old, uh, or I was about to to uh, recollect my old uh, computer in two thousand fourteen, <laughs> and then I realized that I have thrown everything away. Uh, so so so. 2014 I, I bought my first uh, c64 again and uh yeah i got i got a few new friends and uh heading was one of them so mm. uh, i think 2015 i turned up at Goob data and the same 2017 and the same 2018 and and uh I, I I was in light then, so mm. so uh, I, uh, which was probably only or, or it was only me then. So so finally, I took the decision to to get a few friends who were active, and uh, yeah. So it was Genesis Project. Great. Yeah. I, I, I've had the discussion with the Sarge that you can actually be in a group and be <laughs> comfortable in a group, but do other activities for others. You don't need to join them to kind of be friends with them. And uh, you are allowed to socialize with people outside of your group. So, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, if you are the only one, you're the last of the Mohicans, I guess that sort of uh, eventually then, then you have a little few, too few friends uh, doing work with you. Yeah, basically, and uh, I mean that that's not a problem nowadays, really. I mean, uh, we we are all friends, but uh, uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, nice to to uh, to join someone, and uh, I had a lot of friends in in Genesis Project, so it became quite natural. Yeah. So and and uh, here, so you had a, a period where you basically faded off and eventually regained the interest. So. And uh, possibly we should tie this to Assembly 64. What was what did you do when you started again? What what sort of project did you undertake? Yeah, first first I uh, I bought I bought one 64, and and then I I was like, ah, if this breaks, I need maybe need another one. Yeah. <laughs> so I got another one, and then I that's uh, how it well, starts. What if that breaks? And and I, I I realized I need a few more. So so. Uh, so I bought a few more and then I got uh, on, on one of my uh, purchases, I got a hold of uh, uh, 1541 Ultimate one. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. It, it, was not, it was not this one because it, it was the one with the micro SD card, mm -hmm. which you actually had to insert uh, with a knife and uh, did, 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 and it was a bit uh, annoying because sometimes it slipped and you had to open the case and so and uh, so so I uh, it start I mean if you download the stuff on CSDB a few times a week you had to repeat this procedure mm. so I first I, I wrote a crawler uh, for game based, just to get all the games that I I I, I wanted to uh, play again. And uh, then uh, when I have done that, I realized that they didn't release new versions so 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 frequently. So uh, I I actually wrote a scanner for CSDB, which crawled. It was an, an HTML crawler, which pulled down uh, links and uh, downloaded the binaries. So this was quite nice. Um, and then I realized that stuff moved quite a lot on CSDB. There were new releases every day. So so uh, then, um, then I, 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 um, I had to deal with that and uh, I, I wrote a small client. It was a command line client in Python first, and I released that. And uh, it was—I uh, thought it was was going to be a great thing. But people uh, like like Hedning, for example, he uh, he uh, he's not a coder, as you know. He uh, he would like he likes things that just works. Mm. And, for, for my client to run, you had to install Python. You have to yeah. uh, do command line and stuff. So, so uh, it wasn't so popular. It worked, but but um, 
you uh, you you had to actually know a bit about programming. Uh, usability threshold was too high for most people. Yeah, it was. It was. So so next step uh, was to put the GUI on it. Mm. Uh, it was like an embryo of how it looks today with a simple uh, tree and uh, the the basic artifacts like CSDB demos and uh, games and so. On. So then, then, then people actually recording start... in progress. Sorry. All right, right. Yeah. So, so then people actually started to use it uh, quite a lot, and uh, I got in touch uh, with because it, it it's not very nice to crawl HTML crawl mm. a site because it takes a lot of resources uh, out of the site. So I no. I spoke with the the, the guys at the CSDB Klaus. So I actually got him to write. Uh, APIs for me, so so I wouldn't, so it would be so nasty uh, mm. and heavy uh, towards CSDB because a lot of people write write crawlers, so so uh, they were uh, a bit annoying, uh, annoyed when mm. when people uh, uh, were not nice to their site and so on. so so yeah, so so I have a pretty nice uh, uh, entrance towards CS CSDB and I can effectively pull stuff. Mm. Uh, from the site, and and uh, when it was just uh, like a a command line thing, was it still called Assembly sixty four, or was it called something yeah, else? I think or? it was. Uh, I think it was called Assembly sixty four. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was written in Python, uh, which uh, be because I, I mean uh, I realized I, I was going to spend a lot of hours on this. Mm. And uh, I wanted to, I've never coded Python before, so I thought this is platform independent. I had vision that I should be able to release it on other platforms too. Mm. So, and, and since Python is uh, platform independent, that would uh, be a choice for me. Mm. I've, uh, in my profession, I, 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 I'm a Java developer, so I, I was pretty good at Java and I wanted to do something new, so I chose Python. Uh, but after that, uh, I uh, had uh, I had another friend who uh, who wanted to to have a uh, Mac client, and uh, it turned out that it was impossible to get that working because I've chosen a GUI framework which wasn't uh, which wasn't platform independent, mm. and uh, so I decided to to rewrite the entire thing in Java and a framework called JavaFX. Which comes along with Java nowadays. Mm. So that that's uh, that's what you look at basically today uh, when you when you open Assembly sixty four. And the cool thing about this is that it is Java. It is platform independent. So I actually only have to maintain one code mm. base. And uh, I uh, I use GitHub and I use. Uh, I use a few. Uh, I have a PC. I have a, I have a Mac. Uh, so, so I actually just compile the code and do uh, binary distributions to everyone. So that's that's really nice. Cool. So uh, we should have a look before we go to the next part. I would like to remind you to subscribe, like, and most importantly, share. I know that retro computing is something that a lot of people are interested in and they would like to kind of get their hands on uh, or get access to stuff that's relevant to them. So if you have found this and know about the number of people whom you think might be interested, please do me a favor and share with them. Just do it. Thank you. Right, now we've changed settings uh, to watch Frederick's screen here and we will see the details of Assembly 64. So if you've used the program and don't know the tricks, this is how you do it. If you haven't seen the program, shame on you. And uh, if you have seen the program, know all the tricks, but want to learn the well, possibly see the future roadmap of this and learn an additional few very secret tricks. That's, this is what to look for. So Frederick, take it away. Yes, so uh, we start by uh, launching the program.
This oh, that's is, uh, so nice. That's so nice. Yeah, it is really nice. Uh, we'll speak about, uh, I guess we speak about uh, Sarge and uh, me a bit also in this uh, demo of the program, or maybe we can start there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so here is the main screen uh, where you start. And this actually, if you have seen it through the throughout the years, it has been uh, quite different. And uh, I think it was like two years ago when uh, I got in touch with Sarge. Uh, I don't remember exactly how, but he used the progr program also. Uh, so uh, we started uh, talking and chatting and uh, and uh, he had a lot of ideas and so. Uh, and uh, no, I I actually called him because uh, I wanted, uh, I, I didn't like my splash screen. So I, I, I asked him if he wanted to paint, paint a new one. So that's that's uh, that's how it started basically, and then then when when he uh, delivered this uh, beautiful uh, bird, which we uh, fight about if it's a crow or if it's a magpie all the time, and he gets offended because he's the Sarge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is your uh, view, and which is his? Uh, it is. Uh, I, I think it's a magpie, but it's uh, if you say that it's a crow. No, it is a, it is a crow. Uh, but if you say that it's a magpie, he gets pissed. But uh, unfortunately, I think it's a crow. And magpie is Scotta. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I confuse that all the time. Specific also. specific names on specific birds. I'm sorry. I'm not. My English <laughs> is not on that level. So. No. Not not mine either. Actually. Yeah, so 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 when when he uh, he delivered that that beautiful picture, and uh, then then he said, uh, should we continue our uh, collaboration? I mean, I he had a lot of ideas, so mm. so uh, yeah, I said uh, that that would be nice, and he uh, started to do mockups and so, and uh, the more he uh, the more ideas he got, the the harder it was for me to implement because this was. At beginning, implemented as a monolith. That's mm. basically how. How I mean, it was designed for one thing, and mm. uh, the Sarge wanted another thing. So, so it it turned out to be quite painful to to go ahead. Mm. So uh, I said, uh, I need to redesign the entire program uh, to make it a bit more widget based. Mm. So, so, so he could do his design, and I could do my code. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a really, really clean cut between code and uh, design now. Mm -hmm. I don't care about uh, his crazy ideas because <laughs> now I have a framework that that uh, pretty much can handle most of it, uh, most of it. Uh, so so this is this is how it how it looks. It's it's really nice. Uh, Sarge has drawn all the graphics. He has done done all the mockups, and uh, I have implemented. Uh, the code behind it. So um, yeah, this is. Uh, should we have this as a small demo how it works? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, take it away. I mean, I would imagine that a number of people are interested. First of all, those who haven't seen it, and and uh, yeah. so yeah. let's so, let's like the elevator pitch. What does a program do? Why should people download this? The, the absolutely most used feature, and that this was since release 1.0, is to download stuff. And that, that's why I wrote it from the beginning. Uh, and then, then I made it available to everyone. But basically, you do like this. You add an archive. Uh, you choose your path. Um, yeah, I can do... Uh... I can do assembly 64 and then I do save. So then, then it pops up here. I can drill down here and I get in, uh, I get a view of everything that I can install, download and install. So, so now this is a folder on my, my MacBook, but for most people, it's a, it's a USB drive, uh, mm -hmm. which you use in your uh, ultimate 64 or, uh, or so. Or equal. So this is your local repository now. And... This is my local repository, and yeah. and here uh, 
gray means that nothing is installed. Mm. So now I could uh, really easy uh, right click and install and it downloads from my server. So, so there is a backend to this also and uh, where I have my database of users, I have all my artifacts. I have, uh, yeah, I have, have a lo lot of stuff that that I've uh, developed through throughout the years. So what it did now is download basically download the zip file and extract it. And now I can drill down uh, in in the zip file and or or, or the folder, and um, I can see what it installed. So and mm -hmm. I can actually look and if i want to um i can go to emulators and i can add an an emulator and uh, now i i have a few vice emulators mm. so i connect my vice emulator to to the program and when doing like this uh, uh actually now i uh sorry i i started this on my ultimate oh but we can do like this we can uh, mount and run in emulator so now it launches vice and run the demo so everything is really easy accessible uh here it's you have basically everything that's ever been released to uh, commodore 64 by your fingertips and if you connect it to uh to a vice or I, I have quite nice integration to your uh, to, to Ultimate 64 and, and Gideon's product. So, mm. so uh, either you launch it on on uh, on an emulator, or you can uh, run uh, directly on on uh, Ultimate 64. Mm. Yeah, so this you... remote run is it's that was um, a, a rather late addition in compared to yeah, looking at is. the entire I project can, uh... Uh, life cycle, but uh, yeah, super nice. I, we can I can show it uh, right away. Uh, is uh, that so the IP it... address of your uh, ultimate? That is, uh, I can here. I, I can I can uh, I can scan my my home network to to see which which. Uh, Ultimate products. I have that uh, response, and now I, they they are already. Um, you have three of them. Yeah, I have actually a lot more, but uh, <laughs> only uh, three online. So. Uh, but I thought that everybody had one hundred and ninety two hundred and sixty eight zero dot sixty four, but. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't have. <laughs> But but here uh, so 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 here my devices pop up, oh. and uh, Gideon has uh, implemented a, a kind of streaming. Yeah. Oh, we can mute sound. So so uh, so here I I can actually view uh, the output of my Ultimate sixty four uh, in in my program. So I I basically tell the Ultimate that hey I'm on this IP I'm uh, on this port please stream your video and audio to me. So, uh, so, so in the in the background here is my ultimate, and here is my uh, streaming uh, device. Nice. So that's, that's really nice. Uh, so that's really cool. That's that's so yeah, it cool. Is, uh, it is uh, really nice, and I can turn on and I can mute sound. I can actually launch a keyboard also to to type. Uh, so I could uh, do reset, and then uh, I could actually type. So, so this is this is uh, happening on on the ultimate right now. Is that the one you have uh, behind you? Yeah, it's it's that one. The one on the right. Yeah, that one. Cool. Yeah, that's. Uh, so I I can run commands from from this window executing on on that machine. So it's really neat. Also, maybe a feature uh, that, that there is a lot of feature here that that uh, not everyone uh, comes across every day, but that's that's really nice. So um, yeah, people use this a lot, and as we discussed in the beginning, um, I have been forced to develop since, since downloading. I, I I can't download everything 
all the time, like from CSDB. So I've invented a, a Delta concept. So mm. first time you install, it takes a long time, but then mm. I, I you, you get you you just get small chunks of, of data. So uh, when I when there is a DAP update, it's it's really quick, and and you will get you will get notified because this green dot will turn red when there is new data, and then you update it, and you you have the latest stuff again. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite uh, neat. And the the repositories you can download CSDB is one, and you had GameBase as well. Uh, well which we have, other uh, ones could you get? We have CSDB, so so they are categorized in demos, disk mags, uh, favorites. I can go through games, graphics, intros, yada yada. In demos, there is CSDB. Uh, there is a few different cats, uh, mm. and so we have 64.com, we have Guybrush, which is my own repository because I, I do not compete with, with anyone. Uh, but I, it, I, I yeah, I, I will, I will talk a bit about, about that later. But I found, uh, I found programs that I wanted to upload on CSDB which was not scene related. So I, I uploaded a few non-broken games. Mm. And I got uh, I got a lot of bad feedback on that. So you can't upload this, but I felt like I don't want to throw it away. So I created my own repository, uh, which I can uh, install basically what I want in. What sort of program is that? I mean, I, I thought that CSDB wanted everything that was no, sort of... No, CSDB a, is scene... Scene related. related. So yeah. something but which is not scene related. Yeah, uh, we can uh, we can see here. Uh, uh, we can do... Uh, we can do... Guybrush games. We can install Guybrush games. So this is most, uh, this is like games that uh, I've found, which um, not everyone is on uh, on CSDB, mm. non-broken. There are tools, and there are a lot of uh, yeah, with um, a lot lot of lot of stuff that that doesn't have a clear place in CSDB. Mm. So somebody yeah. needs to take them, add their intro, and then upload uh, upload them to CSDB to, so that they could be on CSDB. Yeah, basically. Yeah, mm. I'm not sure the world will be, will be a better place if if people did that, but uh, I'm sure that would be a, an idea for somebody. Yeah, but but uh, as for now, um, I uh, because I, I did a lot of findings, uh, mm. but but they they didn't belong on CSDB and and uh, sure, if it's I mean CSDB is a scene database and uh, mm. a lot of the stuff uh, was not scene related, so yeah. uh, didn't belong there. Um, yeah, so so there are uh, Guybrush, there are CSDB disk mags, um, games. Uh, one loads yeah there there is a lot of of different sources here they they all work in exactly the same way everything looks the same you can just download whatever you want and it behaves in the same way so i can download this and um yeah that was a bit uh, big i can and mayhem crt is that cartridge stuff that that's cartridges yeah Okay, and originals is that tapes or discs? Uh, I think or it's, both. Uh, I think it's uh, original uh, images. I don't know what it's called now. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, it. I think it's uh, games. Yeah, but I mean, are they tape games or disc games? Uh, I should have seen this. It's... It is uh, Elvira. That's disc for sure. E sixty four. Okay, so it's yeah. it's uh, disc images, uh, disc, yeah, and like nibble disc images. Nibble, yeah, exactly, exactly nibble discs. So yeah, uh, that, that's uh, graphics same, uh, and a nice thing is that that you can. Uh, 
you have a top 200 you you can you can cut them in different ways so 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 it's uh, you can uh, if you look at at the demos you could you could um, browse through every year the top 20 de demos of, of uh, each year so you can do a lot of and this is uh, metadata which i have uh, downloaded from csdb so 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 um, a lot of funny things you can you can do with that but uh, i mean if if a demo or let's say a game is one of the top 200 and it's also uh... You store it twice, right? So you store it both under top two hundred, and you also store it like uh, yeah per the name, I guess. Exactly, and and I, I get a lot of uh, not a lot of people, but but ah, uh, there is a lot of duplicates in your yeah. uh, in Assembly Six. Yeah, but don't download everything if you don't like it, because right. that that's the way it's supposed to be, and uh, people mm -hmm. seems to be uh, a bit confused with that. But this is like uh, a big uh, buffet or yep. uh, smelgos board as we say in sweden so so you you just pick what you want you uh, could say smorgor smorgos board, smorgos board. <laughs> yeah. so yeah yeah i mean we are optimizing nerds we are doing a lot of things if if you crack a game and you remove the two jump addresses to init and play and and re change the game to jump directly into the location of the music routine and hope that you will g gain a block by a, those uh, change six bytes. If you do that, then then duplicates of any sorts would sort of annoy you. So yeah, you yeah, are, yeah. it's a picky crowd when it comes to optimization. Optimization. Yeah, it is. It is. Right. So so I think enough said about this. This is like this is a tree uh, that you drill into and you download what you want. Uh, you can uh, from here you can. You can do, uh, yeah. You can mount on. You can mount the disk. You can run it. You can uh, send to ultimate and so on. That that's base the the basic idea. Mm. Yeah, uh, the, the total front end for downloading and and then also playing like everything that was ever released on the platform. It's uh, yeah. yeah, it's super amazing and. Uh, if this is news to you, welcome out from under the stone where you have been hiding all this time. It's it's one thing you should have known about because this is the shit. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Um, so basically, this is what most people use. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, I have everything in a database also, so you don't have to download. I mean, uh, you don't have to download zip files uh you can just use the database we can search here for a light i heard of them yeah uh really good group yeah. uh, we can so so i can so so this this file is is actually uh, sent from from uh, from the backend servers so and and uh, since it's not many 100 175 k it goes really quick so this is retrieved from the server and i can launch instantly so uh so, so actually there, there is and and i can i can send to my my ultimate uh here also so th there is actually no need to download the zip files if you if you uh only only you only only reason why you want to do that is mm -hmm. if you don't want to sit with your modern pc uh with your ultimate but if you run in an emulator there is no need to to download the zip files so yeah, you have basically the filters. Uh, a lot of them you can recognize from from CSDB. Uh, group, year, handle, event. Mm. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, I, I use this myself. Uh, I um, I think it's it's easier and it's always online. Mm. Uh, so I can uh, I I do uh, encourage you to to use this in, instead if if so. And um, there is sort of a, a a fee for for using the program, right? There is. I mean, uh, I have uh, th there has been discussions about this. Uh, there is. I mean, just to make clear, I I don't keep any data. Uh, for I mean th there is a, a donation uh, and the only thing the donation does is unlock like that I don't know what it is I think it's five of these 
dots, like top 200 and so, but all, all content is free. But uh, if you donate, uh, you support my work and uh, you get a few, uh, you, you get a few of these cuts uh, for, for free. And uh, the initial thought about this from the beginning was that I, uh, what people doesn't know is that it's, uh, this is quite back end in intensive. So, mm -hmm. so I've been fortunate enough to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to have a server at the hosting company called Hostech. And mm. uh, the reason for, I mean, since, since most of the people are really fine without this one, and this, this, these uh, collections are, when there is no Delta, since it's like a top 200, I really, I need to re, uh, reload this every time content update. So if, uh, if you're, if you don't donate, you will not be able to uh, to 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 cause this load towards the back end. So, mm. uh, but yeah, of yeah. course, I mean, uh, this is this is not. Uh, it costs a lot of a lot of money to keep all the platforms. I mean, I mm. I have to have uh, MacBooks and so to to just recompile the binaries. Mm. So this this is like supporting my work, and uh, yeah. this is a project of uh, more than five thousand hours. Yeah, I, I mean uh, the the hours and and your personal equipment. Uh, you can always debate on that, but the fact yeah. that you have external yeah. costs towards a hosting provider that that couldn't even be debatable. Even if you're a cheap ass person, uh, I mean, I, I, shipping I in a bit yeah. to contribute to the fact that that Frederick has significant costs for running this for the benefit of everybody should yeah. be a, a really good reason for you to pay. Yeah. And we yeah. should say thank you to Hostec for doing a great job as well here, I guess. So really, really so. So uh, yeah, um, that, that's, um, that's, Cool, but that was the main, right? Uh, that was the main, there... but there, uh, the, I, I can, uh, I can show, um, I can show uh, a few other things. There is a seed player, and this is this is uh, the work of of other. So, so I, I don't, um, I, I do not develop all this. I do not reinvent went, uh, reinvent the wheel all the time. So this is the a guy who have written. Uh, a seed player in Java, mm. and uh, I piggyback on. So, so I basically took my content model and all my content, mm. and um, and connected it with his seed uh, seed player. Oh, and, you have a good one there. Let's go for number three. Oh, sorry, we get echo. That one. Uh, <laughs> no, that was uh, that. That's flex stuff, and and it's good. And of course, I, mean, I meant the one that. Uh, yeah. So so this is uh, this is uh, this this is uh, basically uh, the seed player. It, this was also uh, totally uh, rewritten by, uh, uh, the, or, or the Sarge had a, had a lot of ideas around this. So, mm. so this is uh, here is a lot of functionality around this. And and if you do like this, we retrieved uh, all them. This is metadata coming from CSDB. So uh, uh, okay, so the demos, uh, the the GIF file for the demo, I guess. Yes, it's it's downloaded from CSDB and cached. So mm. so uh, there is uh, we we use quite quite much metadata, and mm. uh, also this is this is uh, connected. Uh, this integrates towards the the ultimate products also, so mm. you can you can actually run your your seed list directly on, on real hardware, if you want to. Um, Excellent. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. nice. And you can have a public playlist. You can uh, you can sub subscribe to public playlists and uh, and so on. So th there is a lot of functionality. And uh, I encourage everyone to, to right click and see what's behind the menu, because there is a lot of functionality that's been developed 
throughout the years. Uh, and this public playlist, c could I make a playlist and then publish it some way? How do I do that? Yeah, so uh, I can um, I can create a playlist, my playlist, and I do it, make it public. Oh, you just make it public like that. Then I then I, uh, then I just add stuff to it, and oh. uh, if you subscribe to it. I will get all all your uh, songs that you add to it. Super, super. Yeah. It it works really nice. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I, I I don't use the the seed player a, a lot. I must admit that I'm I'm using the other parts. So. Yeah, most people do. Uh, I think Seedify is is a bit bit used also, but I'm going to show uh, show another feature which is not used by so many people, but it it makes uh, the life of uh, preservers, the people that upload data on CSDB, hmm. it makes that life really a lot easier and. Um, it has, uh, you, you can think whatever you want about Assembly 64, but the fact is that after I launched this feature, a lot of more files are uploaded on CSDB because I have, uh, I have a checksum database. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually have all, I have the ID of all files that exists and it's really easy to, for, for me to, uh, to point out on a D64 fi uh, file, uh, which uh, which files are uh, findings and not. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I know uh, Heading uh, uses this a lot. Uh, he uh, he validates his disks uh, towards the the database, mm -hmm. and so I use this a lot. This is staging area uh, because I wanted to. Uh, I suspected that people have uh, D64 scanned at home, which they don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. So here is an area where you can upload your D64s. And then there are people, where there is uh, three, four persons at this time uh, scanning uh, them right now. And so, so I can double click this one. Um, and here I see directly that this file is, if it's a star here, it's not preserved before. So my program actually made a call to the server and mm -hmm. calculated eight checksums. And uh, the checksums were not uh, present at the server. And that, then it mar marks this as a finding. So so it's really easy to, to, um, to, to, to um, find a lot of, uh, non-preserved stuff here and uh, there are like 200,000 d64s here that, that people uploaded with findings on i mean a lot of them are false positives but uh, uh, there's there are a lot of lot of stuff that that's not been gone through yet excellent absolutely excellent and we had uh, Mikael Lilja Oxidi doing his tool shed and and that is a bit of the same but uh, yours is more mature and uh... Uh, yeah, it's, you've taken it a number of additional steps. Yeah, uh, the, there is actually uh, all, all the APIs. I mean, if you if you don't like uh, the client or if you want to use functionality, uh, all APIs are open. So mm -hmm. so you can uh, you can basically go ahead and write your own uh, Assembly sixty four client if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, so so. Content is open to everyone, and APIs are open to everyone. And if you would like to to use this uh, this check API, uh, then it's also open. So so the the thing here is that we should avoid uh, um, inventing. I mean, we sh we should be uh, use what what we have in place and uh, not sp spend so much time reinventing the wheel. Here we can see this this is preserved. Um, and um, yeah, so so this this is a lot of help. Cool. 
my apologies i i don't know if you saw that i was dropping out my <laughs> my camera died so ah, this is uh, right, i yeah, i i swapped, you were I swapped to my uh, webcam here and uh, yeah yeah so uh, don't mind me i'm not the main attraction here the program is so right right um but now you're here so um uh, yeah there is a there is a lot of of stuff that I haven't said here. Um, but... So that was the staging area. What uh, what does it say? Elan... Elaine. Yeah, it's. it's I call this uh, this this part of Assembly Six Four Elaine. Yeah. I've chosen a lot of uh, of Monkey Island uh, characters. So Guybrush is my uh, my repository. Elaine is the preserving uh, area, and so on. Uh, so yeah, great. That's uh, yeah, and I have a chat. Uh, there is news, and there is actually charts also, which which we again use as. CSDB metadata. So we actually there is a disc in the descriptor for for a for an for, for a file. There is a field with with rating and so. Mm. So we use that to to uh, to make top lists and so. But that is the same top list as CSDB, I guess. Then because is. Uh, there yeah. is a like a statistics feature of CSDB as well. Yes, it's the same. Yeah. So. Um, uh, uh, again, this is a brilliant program, and if you don't use this, I I, I don't know what, what you've been missing, because that's impossible to miss. So uh, download it and start using and chipping in so we can share the burden of uh, Frederick's uh, hosting cost for this. Uh, wasn't there like a upcoming web development where you don't need the client and stuff? Uh, I am I am working on a web seed seed player, yeah. But uh, and there will be a web web part where you can search and download stuff also. But it will not be as ne as, as good as this one when it comes to integration. Mm. Because when when you're in a web uh, web environment, you have this sandbox around it, mm. uh, and you can't beat this. Since it has full access to to mm. your your computer, when you when you install this program, you basically say, "Hey, I trust Frederick. He will not do delete my C colon and so so I I can write date. I I mean I have a folder where I keep track of of the the program's state and so so. Uh, but there will be a web stuff. I've uh, I've uh, I'm developing this right now. So. So it will be a web seed player, and there oh. will be uh, basically like like CSDB where you mm -hmm. can where you can browse and so. Yeah, competing with what's his name, Deep Seed or the JCH uh, has something which is yeah Deep web -based. Seed. Uh, yeah, he has a, he has a seed player also. Uh, yeah, we we see he he has his uh, his touch on his stuff, uh, but um, and it's a nice player. Um, I see if I can give him a match. <laughs> oh, yeah, a race for his money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, we'll see. Cool, Frederick. Is there anything else you would like to show us, or are we done for today? I think uh, I think I've uh, showed the most part that I that I want. Um, probably probably lots of stuff f forgotten, but uh, the main main uh, bolts are, are there. Cool. So uh, we will have links to uh, Assembly sixty four down in the description, of course, and. Uh, you will have Frederick's mail address on on that link as well, and uh, I guess you can also uh, send personal messages or direct messages on CSDB to Scooby of Light. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I think that was everything for today. Thank you so much, Frederick, for taking the time and looking forward to. It. Will I meet you at uh, this uh, Fjelldata?
Uh, no, uh, I will not attend there. Uh, I have uh, I have a lot of uh, stuff at home right now. I have a small oh. party and and everything, and a lot of kids and so. So uh, <laughs> I need to prioritize my time. Uh, yeah, cool. that can that can I can say also. I've uh, been a few years as a uh, single, so I've actually been fortunate enough to to put a lot of hours into this. Uh, now my time is a bit more limited. I can't spend uh, that much uh, right now, but it, it has taken the program into a, into a quite quite decent uh, stage, which uh, which it feels like. You always say that it's, it, it, I mean, it will never be finished, but now it's like most parts are in place the the entire oh. model of content and so it doesn't change so much so so now it's right now we're in a fine tuning stage there comes ideas from the surge sometimes mm. like oh fuck <laughs> but uh <laughs> But, well, uh, uh, and yeah. again, you being single, um, I do have good statistics over the channel and who is watching and they are like, uh, if you're looking for females, this is not the well, channel to market yourself. Anymore. Sorry yeah, about that. Like, so uh, it's, I'm, it's I'm like 99.98% guys here. So. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, but, but, but um, yeah, I, I hope I see you at Moose Dota. Uh, yes, an... yes, I, I do have an invitation for that. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. So Great. thank you so much, everybody, for, for watching. And uh, super thanks to Frederick for taking the time. And uh, yeah, yeah, looking forward to your feedback on Assembly 64. And, uh, and uh, do enjoy the program. And uh, we will meet next week. I will try to have an episode of Ally TV ready by next week. So bye bye. Thank you, Pontus. Bye.